we don't want to be vulnerable enough to let other people make that huge difference for us at times. I literally got my pistol, like laying at my bedside, thinking about like this past year, I won a contest to go record a song with Derek Minor. For Community For You, what are some, I don't know, some some tips, some thoughts, uh, maybe some, some questions that somebody uh, who is like myself would be on the outside of what you might be experiencing, how can we serve someone like you who is going through this process and wanting help from it? No, that's a, that's a great um, question, man. You said, how can somebody from the outside uh, be wanting to, to step into that kind of situation yeah. uh, as people are going through it? Man, I say, man, my dog, uh, James Jenkins, man, he's this dude at my old church. We literally saw him come uh, off the streets from poverty, right? Wow. Get tapped into our church, then get married there, uh, and then start getting help. Still struggling with a lot. But it was literally like two or three years where it's like, I kid you not, my dog, uh, Chris Mack, too, he's also uh, on a team uh, serving. But, you know, in poverty, it kind of feel like, and for people that's in it, mm -hmm. almost every situation can be a crisis situation. Like, mm. And when you add in some mental health challenges, too, you add in uh, substance abuse problems, you add in certain addiction problems, right? Yeah. Like, there's so many things that are like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We literally had like four or five people, and I was one of them, right? Who like we knew he. You know what I'm saying? We was kind of on call, like oh, talking yeah. Through, yeah. through different. Like some things felt like, like oh, this isn't that big. Mm -hmm. The other things was like, yo, this dude's kind of on the edge of ending his life you know wow. what i'm saying so yeah. some calls where i took where it's like yo like i i'm glad i didn't like ignore that phone call you know what i'm mm, saying yeah, so i yeah. think uh one of the biggest things even talking like even mentioning that though is like we're not saviors like nobody is the savior mm, that's good bro. so yeah we can often enter in those situations thinking we got to have the silver bullet Cause I think kind of the uh y'all said y'all talk about the churchianity in the West has kind of put up this kind of savior mentality of like we gotta have this answer, this one liner, this yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, but people's situation is so complex, especially when coming out of poverty, man. When you're coming through a lot of trauma, right? So it's like the best, the best things is just being there, you feel me? And then like maybe throwing the alley to other people who might be able to be there that when you can't be there. And that's yeah. what, that's what I feel like I had, I had to learn a lot in that situation. Yeah. But then when it came to me reaching out for people, right. When you're on the risk, when you're on the end of like reaching out, mm -hmm. you're vulnerable. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I hate asking for help. I hate asking for need, but that's pretty much all I did last year. Like almost every other day I was asking in the beginning of the year, I was on my I was on the phone with my guy Chris almost every other day because he he was married for like a couple years before me. I was like, yo, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to think. Like, help me vent, help me process, help me approach, help me love. You know what I'm saying? And he would pour into me. And then times where he couldn't, it'd be like, dang, like I really need help. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So it's like just just being cool with like saying, yo, I'm not gonna be able to provide you with all the answers and care you need. And I'm gonna be here. Wow. That's it. Wow. Hit my dude Alvin up. He came, he literally came that first time. The first mm -hmm. time uh all my stuff was gone. Yeah. He was there with me, like getting my stuff together, pulling it out the alley, waiting for the police to show up. That same night, he pulled up at midnight, uh a little bit after I got robbed, and I told him the situation. He pulled up at like 30 some minutes let me stay at his spot because the windows were busted i was vulnerable i didn't know who was in in the neighborhood uh looked like people were milling about too mm -hmm. i was i was a sitting duck to be honest i ain't had my strap on me at the time like wow like i literally i didn't know what to do and i was already on 10 so he literally gave me a place to stay yeah and 
sat and talked with me for a little bit till I fell asleep. Um, uh, so it's like, but then the next day, got to church, and then one of the people from the church was able to patch up my windows. Hey, and um, then yeah, so we got the windows boarded up, and then uh, one of the elders helped get a cleaning lady because it was like blood on the floor and stuff, right? Yeah. So they get a cleaning lady, got that stuff paid for. Wow, uh, wasn't paying for that stuff. Um, so it's just like, wow. It, 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 oftentimes we approach those situations kind of thinking like we got to have the silver bullet but that's why we talk about community like it's multiple people got to be kind of like saying yo i might not be able to do this but i know such and such knows how to board up a window i might not be able to do this but i you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. i can it can be monetarily or it can be time because sometimes i just need to talk to somebody because i was lonely because i was hurting you feel me yeah. so it's not always necessarily it doesn't have to look one way how we might think like sometimes we think if we don't leave a situation where we gave somebody a a clear cut like these are the next steps this is the answer then we fail somehow but that's just not the case man um it, it takes multiple people um yeah. so it's it's freedom in knowing that we're not jesus you know what i mean <laughs> amen. amen bro right. man yeah that's so good so so be available right know that you don't have all the answers right and therefore help with what you can help so that means if you have the resources cool if not if you know someone else who can uh and then understanding that we are not jesus i like that you touched on the fact that it's like hey people have um, a jesus complex right it's kind of the wording that people would, would use is that um yeah you feel you you throw this imaginary cape on your back and you try to take the weight of the world on your shoulders. You try to take the weight of your, you know, brother or sister that you're helping through, and then uh, it ends up doing you more harm, right? Uh, as the one who is trying to help, uh, because then you start taking on far more than you were able to, and uh, and then now, not only are are is is my friend hurt, but now I'm getting hurt myself, and so now I'm trying to help with a wound that I'm starting to create you know, on my own side and it just can get really messy situations. So, uh, I love that breakdown, uh, that you gave. And I think those are very tangible things of which that, um, we do have to remember and every situation is different, uh, as well. So some, some situations, maybe God placed us there so that we would be the person to fulfill whatever that help was for the person who patched up your window or the person who, uh, got the cleaning, uh, lady to be able to, to clean up. Like, Maybe they were able to be that person, right? But um, also um, understanding that maybe not. And maybe your only call was to just be present, just to be available when someone can hit you up and you're at least there even as an ear. And, and I like that you were talking about that you don't always have to have the words because I think many of us, and myself included, because I am a problem solver, I do like to talk things through, um, Honestly, sometimes just shutting up and just listening and saying, I'm sorry that this is happening or I understand um, or I'm or I'm trying to understand or whatever um, is far more beneficial than trying to uh, give some, you know, great quotes and scriptures and everything else, which, again, none of those are wrong, but um, you got to have discernment. You got to understand when's a good time, when's not a good time for that stuff, man. So, um all of that was good, bro. All of that was good, man. I appreciate you, like Nisha said, I appreciate your, your realness um, to be able to not only communicate it, but to communicate it in the middle of it still, like in the middle of still processing um, things like that. So with, with you working through it, okay, with you working through it, um, are there moments, because I, I think, and I'm kind of, I'm, I'm picturing somebody who is hearing this and um, either they've not gone through it or they've been going through it or whatever. Um, and a lot of these kind of conversations can sound like either this is like a binary thing, like either you're in the middle of it, not doing well, or you've got past it and you're doing well. But if we're honest, it's like a roller coaster. Sometimes out of nowhere, you'll be on these highs and then all of a sudden, boom, that memory gets brought back to you. Talk about that, bro. What is it? Is that is that something that is fair to say that there is a lot of ups and downs even when you feel like you are over something? No, I mean fact. That's that's big facts, man. Um, 
and that's something that i mean specifically when i got into counseling one of the things that he that the goal of it right was these first couple times was yeah how to transition through divorce Mm. right and what does it mean to grieve something right what does it mean to grieve how to identify where you're at in a grieving process and so i mean i i I just seen a lot of of what it means to grieve and like just learning like practically that there's stages to it so you can feel like you're saying you can feel like you're you're on top of the world and um like when i when my granny passed too i saw this in my family members like Mm -hmm. lily at the funeral was crazy bubbly engaging trying to you know saying uh live and stuff up Mm -hmm. but as as time goes on it's like deep wailing and being racked with grief you Mm -hmm. feel me like Mm -hmm. being around that that type of ear splitting grief where like you literally see them just like it's hard to describe I, I know in the Bible, I feel like there's better context for it because we often don't sit with grief and and deep pain as much. Yeah, we like yeah. move past it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But being able to see that from other people and then allow myself to do that, it's not a it's not a one two three type thing. Mm. Like, yeah. And I think a lot of a lot of times, yeah, from the outside looking in, or when you're inside of it, you kind of think like it's a it's a linear type of journey right really it's like a a, it'd be up down and then it can feel like you're going back a bit and then it feel like you like loop up take a circle and then nope wait no oh we're going nope we're back down again so it's like you just learn to love the process that's all i can say man like you just learn to love the process however may look like uh and let people other people into it yeah, I feel like that's the biggest thing that um, some of my counselors said is let other people because you try to show up for other people, mm-hmm. um, let other mm-hmm. people show up for you. Amen. And I think that's that can be the most difficult thing for us because, like like we were saying before, we kind of had this complex where we we want to be the ones to to uh, change that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. To change somebody's situation or be the the difference maker in the world, but we don't necessarily want other people to. We don't want to be vulnerable enough to let other people make that huge difference for us at times, uh, unless it's on our terms. Man, it's it's so many instances where it's like this past year, I won a contest to go record a song with Derek Minor at his crib. Hey, that's what's up. So I I'm mean, actually it was just to to get a song and a marketing deal, whatever, right? Mm-hmm. And I said, yo, can we pull up on you? So he's like, show. So we went and I just got to meet him. And I came with my guy Alvin too. Yeah. And this other dude, St. Lynn, man. Um, like, and it's like a moment like that was like, yeah, it needs to hurry up and be released. A moment like that was crazy because it's like I literally listened to this dude my the first time I went through depression mm. and was ever wrestling with suicide. His song Live was literally one of the songs that saved my life at the wow. time. So to then meet him. And then be kicking it like it's a like it's a homie, and then also be affirmed during those different parts of the process. Is like, man, like I can't even really soak this. Like I feel like at the time, I, didn't even, I wasn't even able to soak it in fully at the time. And then like a month later, ended up, you know, what I'm saying getting the record with like Stephen Malcolm or something like that. You feel me? So it's like yeah. it's like all these little pockets too of like highs that that were like stretched, like spread throughout. That was like, man, I don't even. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things like, yeah, it, stuff you don't even think about, right? Yeah. Can can happen just like that. And so I just encourage anybody. It's like, yeah, also just work to just really be present in every single of them. Like when the grief's hitting real bad, mm-hmm. Just mm-hmm. let it let it wash over you. Mm. Don't try to uh uh kind of tuck it in. Yeah, and then. When the joy is hitting you, right? When the happiness is hitting you, let that let that soak in. Don't yes. try to sabotage yeah. the moment by like, I wonder how this song gonna do, or oh, I wonder if my uh if I'm delivering good enough, like like all that stuff, like yeah, 
let all those moments wash in and just be present for all of them because they're going to be gone like that. Mm -hmm. um, and those things are going to be your stones of remembrance, um, you know what I'm saying, that allow, allow you to look back at God's faithfulness like, dang, I lost a lot, but wow, I'm surprised I'm still making gains that I didn't even dream of. You feel yeah. me? So, yeah. That's good, bro. No, that's good, man. Hey, and actually, uh, speaking of joy, let's go ahead and get into the Oxen Brand spotlight of the evening. You've got a song that we're going to go over called Joy, bro, and I feel like uh, this would be a good time to to transition into that song, man. Tell us tell us about it. Um, how uh, yeah, how were you, right? Where, where were you in the process of writing this song, man? I was literally got back from Uber ride, mm -hmm. um, and this lady she uh i thought it was i thought it was gonna be a short because usually I, sometimes i do like the shorter ones mm -hmm. i just got back from a mental health conference that was amazing too so it was literally gonna be like a six seven minute ride to like the gas station and back to her crib mm -hmm. uh, so she hops in the car i'm thinking oh everything we're just gonna make this a short little mission um but then she uh she's like oh my i like i just, just had a miscarriage last week but I'm, I'm doing, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm blessed. I'm, I'm staying joy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I was like, nah, like, like, that's, that's really hard. Yeah. Like, take time to greet that. But she is just really, you know, just insisting upon like, yeah, it's, it's hard, but I gotta, I gotta keep going. You feel me? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and that's how, you know what I'm saying? Air, she's in kind of hood and she's just black woman and that's the thing a lot of black women face this pressure to uh carry the weight of a pain and kind of mask it yeah and literally as she was going to the gas station i could hear like she was it's so many times she's stopping because she's just in so much physical pain mm. and struggling to breathe when she got back and i was like can i help you out and she's like no nah, no nah, i'm good i'm good you feel me Right. And it's like I literally just got back to the crib and just wept because mm. I can't imagine that pain, what it's like to lose somebody and yeah, then feel like you gotta put on a brave face because you probably maybe I don't know if she was just single in it or not, but yeah, like having to feel like you just gotta keep pushing on and um like I don't know, it it's just something that really struck me and just really hurt my heart. Um, come back from that uh, Uber ride, and then um, so after that, like I was just reflecting on, on mm -hmm. it brought me back to my own uh, traumas and um, like the so it's like that first verse was just from trying to kind of tell that story. Mm -hmm. then the second verse was diving to, into my own, got more introspective, mm -hmm. and so that, at that time during the year, while well, I was leaning on people because. Like I mentioned before, I struggled with depression and suicide before, and I did again this this past year. Mm. So really, when I had this the suicidal ideations and thoughts, I texted like four of my four of my homies. I was like, "Yo, I feel ashamed that I'm still wrestling with this all these years later." Wow. Um, but I just need I need somebody to pray. For, I need you to like pray for me right now. I need yeah. like I just need to tell somebody that this is where I'm at because I just, like, I'm, I literally got my pistol, like laying at my bedside thinking Sheesh. about like, dang, I'm tired of having to defend my life and then fight. I feel like I'm fighting and still being abandoned uh, by God. So I was just transparent in that song um, wow. and thinking about what, what the effect it would have on my family initially. Yeah. Um, and then, um, some of my counselors say it's good you think about how other people but you gotta remember you have a purpose right yes and so also yes. talking about like just how nah this is still stuff it's still light it's light you got left for shining even though it feels like darkness is rising all around you like it's it's not the end though it may seem like it uh, even though it seems like a lot of things in it like it's death around you it's loss it's grief mm -hmm. like even thinking about her situation it's like dang like um and it's crazy because literally like the one of one of my dogs I reached out to, right? It's like the week my granny died, um, he told me he he was having a baby like two 
uh, it's like a couple days later, he hit me up. Like he was checking in on me about my granny's passing. Yeah. But, um, he also gave me that news, and it kind of felt like just kind of that cycle of life, you know, where it's like, man, I, I was literally in tears just hearing that news and that he tried because I was. I was, I think, the first person he told outside his wife that news. So it just felt like a kind of like a a a, a, a power up in the midst of, of that death. Where it's like, man, the dude, the type of dude I know he is, mm -hmm. and who I know uh, that family would, that legacy they would create. Like it just had me super encouraged that, um, yeah, God. God's always doing a new thing when it seems like one, one thing is ending like a life like hers mm -hmm, mm -hmm. ending. Like God's always bringing forth new life somehow, some way. Uh, so, yeah, I say that's um, th that's a lot of the inspiration behind joy is that like joy come from the midst of, of suffering. Oftentimes like that lasting joy, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like. Mm -hmm. Uh, the spirit has engulfed you. You know what I mean? That's good, bro. That's good. All right, y'all. Let's go ahead and get to this song by the homie Rome called Joy. Let's go. I just, I can't thank you enough for your transparency because, and, and here's the thing. Here's what I, I like about your transparency is you're not giving us a list of problems, a list of issues that you've gone through um, or that you're going through and then just leaving it at that like there is something more into your song there's something more into your message i mean just just the fact that you even said in your song it's again in that first verse where you really were wanting to help and um there was nothing just understanding that there was nothing you could do and how that grieved your heart and that broke your heart um that in and of itself was was dope to really reflect on of like, man, yeah, I can't tell you how many times that I'm hurt that I can't change someone else's situation. Um, but again, having our conversation, knowing that you're not there like that, that was like a, like a picture. That was like, that was a moment, right? Now you might still be processing it and everything else, but like you were just, you like the, like the Psalms, like you just wrote down exactly what you thought, what you felt. However, I do know that rather in songs to come, or just at least even in these conversations, you're not saying, but just stay there. And I think that's really important, bro. So I do appreciate that about you, man. No, most definitely. I appreciate it, Brody. And just so I encourage everybody here too, like, um, that's the biggest thing is in in all in all positions when you feel like you're trying to be the help or you're trying to be the helped like that's at the end of the day it's not about what you can do i think as we get along in our journeys we we start believing it's our own strength and our own wills mm. but it never has been so when we get in those spots where it's like man i just don't know what to say what to do yeah. i don't feel like i did anything it's like well it never really was you you know what I mean? Wow. Right. It it was always God's power working in us. So um definitely just be encouraged. Like, even as you're hearing my story, maybe you resonated with some of this stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, and maybe you're thinking about people in your life, and you're like, Man, I wish I wish I had the words, the stuff to say. It's like, man, God, uh God's words is is so much more life giving. Uh, in, in the right times, right, uh, a right answer uh, can turn away wrath. Um, but uh, just meditate on when you don't have the words to say. Just be there. You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. um, just be willing to, to you know, what I'm saying, cry with somebody. Listen to him. Yeah, that's good, bro. Hey, if you liked any of this content and you found some value in it, make sure that you like, subscribe, and of course, share it. Also, if you're interested in some more, go ahead and check out these videos. Till next time, grace and peace. Adios.